John, wait a second. You told me I was talking to kids. I don't think I can do this. Adults, uh, can you please leave? <laughs> All right. You can listen too. But uh, I'm really talking to uh, the youth here. And I'm going to talk about superheroes versus zombies or how you can survive the robotic revolution. First, I want to give you a little bit of historical context. This is a graph showing the development of technology over time. And one thing that I want you to notice about this graph is it's massively out of scale. What this graph should actually look like is a really long line, very flat. Flat, 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 flat. And at the very end, it shoots up. We're in, the, we're in this end right here. We're shooting up. The reason this occurs is because it takes technology to create technology. Before you had a hammer, you couldn't build something that needed a hammer. Somebody had to invent the hammer first. But we're now in a place where we've got such an amazing wealth of technology that we can create new things even faster than ever before. So about 1823, this happened. Sabotage. Has anyone heard this word before? Sabotage. It comes from the word, French word, sabot, for shoe. Sabot, a wooden shoe. What happened was that in about 1823, the Luddites, or the textile workers, had a problem. And this was the problem. Somebody, really smart person, decided that they could make the loom even faster. They could build a loom that could produce about 10 times the output with one person that 10 normal um, textile workers could produce by creating an automatic shuttle that carried that thread through the loom very quickly, automatically. The workers didn't like this. They thought, oh my goodness, all we know how to do is run a loom, and now machines are taking our jobs. So they took off their wooden shoes and they jammed them in the gears of that loom to try to break it. Now what happened, of course, is that the jobs didn't disappear, they just changed. Different kind of jobs. So no longer could you get a job pushing that shuttle through the loom. You had to learn how to do something different. Change is the thing that you can count on. Change is the thing that is constant, and it's getting even faster. As you can see, the, this curve is sloping up, and it's going to get faster and faster and faster. The rate of change is increasing. So I want to take a little sidebar here and talk about what is technology. Here is a piece of technology that I built. This is called the Bear Robot. Um, this is about five years old, actually, so this is really old technology now. Uh, it's a really exciting robot. It can do some amazing things. It has superhuman strength. It can lift about 500 pounds. It can smash through doors. It can pick up heavy stuff. All kinds of neat stuff. <laughs> Very destructive, right? That's all kinds of fun. Um, it was originally designed for rescuing soldiers from the battlefield, but what we realized is that if we could build a robot that was capable of rescuing a wounded soldier, it would be useful for all kinds of other amazing things. Now, we've taken a lot of the technology that we've uh, developed, a lot of the um, intelligence, and we put it into other robots. So this robot's called QCBot. This is a robot that is used in hospitals for delivering medications or food or trash or linens, whatever needs to go from point A to point B in the hospital. Now you may think those healthcare workers are saying, oh my goodness, robot's going to come and take my job. Let me put my wooden shoe in it to try and uh, break it. Um, but as a matter of fact, that's not what we're seeing in this particular case because what we find is that the healthcare workers are way overworked right now, first of all, but they uh, want to spend their time focusing on solving patients' needs. So that allows them to not spend time pushing stuff around the hospital, but instead take care of patients' needs. So a couple of robots here I just showed you. I want to ask you some questions. Is this a robot? Who thinks this is a robot? Anyone know what this robot is? Megatron. What about this? Is this a robot? Yeah, it's a robot. This one doesn't have any arms. Does it, is it still a robot? It doesn't have arms. How can it be a robot without arms? All right, well, I've got a tough one for you. Is this a robot? Who thinks this is, why do you think this is a robot? Well, it's a machine. A machine. It produces work. Does work. Does work. All right, well, I like that. That's good. What about this? The iPhone, is it a robot? No? I'm hearing some no's now. How many of you have recently talked to your iPhone, asked it a question, and had it talk back? Right? Okay, we've got some hands. 
So I think a lot of people might consider that a robot. What about this? What would the Luddites have thought about this? Sewing machine, is this a robot? What about your blender? Is this a robot? Trick question. <laughs> Who's this? Bumblebee, all right, yes. Your car is, what about a light bulb? Is a light bulb a robot? All right, so I heard some no's. The point I want to make, and this is the idea I've had, because over the years I've had debates with numerous people about where that line from tech, just generic technology changes to robots. When is it no longer just technology? When does it become a robot? And the thing I realized is you really can't draw a line anywhere. It's arbitrary. So I'm just going to talk about the fact that a robot is automation, which is a labor-saving device, which is technology. Lots of people won't agree with me, but one of the things I want you to learn from this talk is that even if people don't agree with you, that's okay. You have good ideas and you should pursue them. So, technology and robots. So, technolo technological revolution, I'm gonna change to robot revolution. And one other thing that I wanna show you, which is interesting in setting the stage for what I wanna talk about. I'll get there, I promise. Um, you can see that is, Recently as 1950, most of the people in the world were under the age of 30. Big, big change is happening. Predicted by the year 2050 that most of the people are gonna be over the age of 60. Can anyone think about some of the challenges this might produce? So the, ro the, the future is gonna be filled with robots and old people, basically. <laughs> so, all right, so think about that. So how do we survive the robot revolution? So you really have two options to consider. One is you can become a mindless, technology-consuming zombie. Let me show you an example of that. There it is. All right, what's this person doing? Watching TV, playing video games, consuming media, consuming stuff that somebody else came up with, right? Basically, you turn your brain off and you're stimulated. They talked about endorphins earlier. Did anyone hear that talk about endorphins? Yeah, video games, uh, TV, media, it's, it's all engineered to stimulate those endorphins. It kind of uh, makes you feel good, but you really shouldn't be feeling good because you haven't accomplished anything. You haven't done anything yourself. All right, so do you wanna be a zombie? Option number two, and you're gonna hear a slight repeat of the last talk, is to become a superhero. So I'm hoping that you're gonna choose the become a superhero option. Now, who knows who this is? Iron, Iron Man. How many of you would say that um, this is science fiction? Science fiction. All right, well, let's take Iron Man apart really quickly. Um, when Iron Man looks through his mask and he looks out at the world, what happens when he sees somebody or something it's annotated, right? Little blinky lights come up. It says, oh, that's Joe, and that's Mary, and that's a Horitzer, and this is, um, labels everything in the world for him, makes him seem super smart. Okay, we're pretty close to doing that now. What about his um, super strength, right? He's got the suit on that makes him really strong. We're actually pretty close to doing that too. That's right, we've got exoskeletons. How about the most outrageous thing, his flying? If any of you have uh, Googled Flying Man on YouTube, you'll know that there's a man out there with strap jetpacks on his back, short little wings, and flies around just like Iron Man. So maybe the thing we're furthest from having is his infinite power supply embedded in his chest. That will probably come soon, who knows? Um, but the point is that uh, through technology, we can all be superheroes. So what is a superhero? Three things. First of all, a superhero helps other people. Um, my daughter, back when Katrina happened, not Sandy, but Katrina, um, was very, very concerned for the people that had been hurt and damaged, uh, property damaged. She decided she wanted to do something. She was eight years old. What in the world could an eight-year-old do to help people? Um, she decided she was going to sell lemonade and raise money. And in one single day, she raised $90 selling lemonade in front of her house to help people in, um, uh, after Katrina. Well, that made me very proud, and it also showed to me that no matter how small you are or young you are, you can make a difference. You just have to try. So we all have superpowers. You need to always use your powers for good. Never use your powers for evil. 
Number two, you must be adaptable. And I'm going to come back to this, but you need to learn how to learn. What happens when Iron Man is faced with a new situation? He doesn't say, okay, sorry, I wasn't trained for this, and give up. He figures it out, right? He takes advantage of the tools he has. One of the best tools you have is your imagination. I think it was Einstein who said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. This is true. Imagination is what's going to solve the world's problems in the future. And then you need to be confident. I um, went through life having people telling me I couldn't do things. I was told that I couldn't go to the university I wanted to go to. I wouldn't make it. I was told I couldn't run a company the way I wanted to run it. It would never work. I was told I couldn't build the type of robot I wanted to build because it was impossible. You know what? I hate to tell them, but I did all three. And the reason I was able to do those was not because I'm particularly smart. It's not because I have a whole lot of talent. It's because I didn't listen to them, and I tried. And I worked hard, and I made it happen. And each one of you can do that. So I want to talk about Adaptable a little bit more. Because uh, we're back to this slide. You're getting sick of it. But what happens is things are changing. And they're changing faster and faster. We are going to have to learn to adapt. You can be that zombie sitting there consuming things turning off your brain, being fed, spoon-fed, or you can learn how to adapt and you can contribute. You can create the type of world that we would all like to live in in the future. There are plenty of problems that need to be solved. We've heard a lot of great talks today about people trying to solve those problems. Each one of you has the power to make a difference in the world. Each one of you can do amazing things. Just think about the tools you have at your fingertips that Make it possible for you to have a real impact in the world. You have tools that make you the most powerful being in the history of the planet when you consider the history of this world up until now. My wife the other day, she's been working on solving healthcare problems in Africa, and she was talking on her cell phone to one of her workers in Africa, and it just made me stop and think, wow, how amazing is that? that she's using this little handheld device. I mean, we wouldn't even thought this was possible just about 15 years ago. She's talking on this little handheld device to somebody on the other side of the planet, figuring out how to solve healthcare problems by using tablets and cell phones and mobile technology. That's amazing. So you need to learn how to learn. Biggest challenge we have to learning is losing our curiosity. When you're a baby, you are very, very um, enchanted by the world. But very quickly, for some reason, we tend to lose this. So don't fight your curiosity. Don't fight your passion. You need to love what you do. If you're not excited about what you're doing, you're not going to have an impact. So lots of times I think people go to school and they think, oh, I need to study X, Y, or Z. That's what my parents want, or that's how I'm going to be able to make a good living for myself. You need to find what you're passionate about and never stop. Um, I just started learning how to play the guitar a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, this was sort of one of those things where I thought, you know, years before, I'm like, I could never do this. But uh, I, I decided that I was going to figure it out, and I'm making progress. And each one of us can do that. Don't fight your imagination. It's your biggest ally in solving the problems that our world has to overcome. So never listen to people when they tell you you can't do it. You can. Each one of you can make a major difference in this world. And it's your responsibility. You need to dream big. You need to work hard. You need to do something amazing. Above all, make sure you're doing something good. People who help others are healthier, happier, live longer, are more fun to be around, have a better self sense of self-worth. This is who you want to be. Be somebody who makes a positive impact in the world. Do something good. You are a superhero. Thank you.